Let's get into some football with Johnny Mack here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. As uh, we got a lot of off-season stuff here. You know, I was reading some off-season uh, rankings, and uh, we'll get into this uh, maybe uh, next week. But uh, Pro Football Focus, ESPN.com, ranked all the different units, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. Eagles were the number one offensive line in the league. They were the runner-up for the best running back unit in the league. They were also third for tight ends, and they were number two for interior defensive linemen. I'm wondering if, John, you think that they got slighted anywhere uh, in those rankings because they were the only areas of the field that they were rated. It was number one offensive line, second in running back, second or third, excuse me, in tight end, and second in interior linemen. Yeah, well, uh, it, obviously they won the Super Bowl, so there's a number of good units on the team. If you're looking for one that they probably uh, immediately come to uh, the forefront, I would say defensive end as well as defensive tackle, uh, and the fact that not only Brandon Graham playing at such a high level, but also people forget, you know, Vinny Curry was solid. He's never going to be thought of uh, as anything that great here because of the contract and uh, the perception that he underperformed because he didn't have a lot of sacks, but he played well last year. Chris Long was absolutely tremendous uh, as a part-time player. And then you had Derek Barnett. So when you add in the depth uh, at that defensive end spot, uh, I think that's one that should have been uh, certainly – brought up probably before running back. I I think, you know, running back, we talked about their committee approach and they had success with it, but you can tell by the way the Eagles act uh, that they want to improve there. So, you know, when you, when you take an analytical approach and a lot of guys had career years with the Eagles last year, uh, last season. So that's understandable. But if you talk to them in the building, certainly defensive line, defensive end, as well as the interior, as they did mention, uh, is not a concern, whereas running back probably is more of a concern. You know, I was surprised. You know, you look at that Eagles running back unit. They don't have the standout guy, but I guess Jay Ajayi, Corey Clement, putting Sproles back to the equation, Wendell Smallwood, that uh, as a unit they seem pretty strong according to pro football focus. Yeah, and, and and if it was last season, obviously Legarrett Blunt was effective as well. So you lose him, but Darren comes back. Look, it's not by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not trying to say uh, they're desperate at that particular position, but you can see in the, in the fact that this is the second straight year that probably things didn't fall in 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 the draft the way they would have liked to, and if they did, they probably would have taken a running back. Uh, they did bring in Matt Jones. So you can see they're always trying to improve, uh, and and they're always trying to improve at every position. But if, if you look at defensive ends, and especially this year, forget about last year. I mean, last year was spectacular. Uh, but if you project it moving forward and have Michael Bennett instead of Vinny Curry added to that same group of, of Graham, Chris Long, Derek Barnett, I mean, that's that's really, really good. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the tight end spot we talked about, uh, they talked about as uh, the uh, third best in the league behind New England and Kansas City. They were also um, right there behind the running backs was the Saints, by the way, was number one in that area. They were the number one offensive line. Dallas and Tennessee were second and third. Uh, So, uh, and the Eagles are an interior defensive line. We're right behind the L.A. Rams. And we know the Rams really uh, beefed up an already pretty good off uh, defensive front. Yeah, the Rams obviously are loaded with Aaron Donald and Indomitian Sue. Interestingly, though, for the Eagles, I mean, we just talked about edge rushers, defensive end. They're actually worse off at defensive tackle this year. Now, part of that is because of the Tim Jernigan injury, uh, and there is a concern from that perspective because he's going to be out probably four to six months, and if it's six months, uh, you're talking about at least probably halfway through the season before you'll even see Tim Jernigan. And you can tell by the uh, the talk, the bringing in and, and kicking the tires on players like Courtney Upshaw and, and 
and Cedric Thornton that they want to add to that defensive tackle position because all of a sudden, yeah, you had Haloti Nada, and if Jernigan's there, we say, well, that's really deep. But all of a sudden, the dominoes start to fall. Now it's Fletcher, Haloti Nada, and then you're down to Destiny Vallejo and Elijah Qualls, which is not the same as, say, the backups at defensive end, which, as we mentioned, are Chris Long and Derek Barnett. John McMullen at J.F. McMullen. Uh, check out his national NFL column, GetMoreSports.com. And we're going to talk a little bit about the national scene here, John. Uh, I sent uh, you a list of uh, options earlier in the day, so I'm very interested to get your results on this. Uh, one being, who is the 2018 NFL MVP based on – I'm looking at some of the answers that were picked by uh, some other national uh, writers here, and we got a – slew of them. Aaron Rodgers, Carson Wentz, Drew Brees, Todd Gurley, um, Jimmy Garoppolo. Holy mackerel, we're going Garoppolo already. Uh, where are you on the MVP? Well, and, and this is one, when you talk about MVP, I think that's one of the most disappointing parts of the NFL, to be honest with you, because it comes down to quarterback. It really does. I, I mean, uh, and I give somebody credit for bringing up Todd Gurley. That's just not going to happen. And we know all the the obvious uh, consistent contenders. Starts with Rodgers and Brady. Uh, would have been Carson if he didn't get injured last year. Drew Brees is obviously always in the conversation. So I, it's probably going to come from that group. If you're looking for a name, that maybe isn't on the radar because I think they have an opportunity to have a really, really good team. And obviously, if you're the quarterback on a really good team, you're going to get MVP contention talk. It would probably be Jared Goff more than a Todd Gurley. Uh, and and it, Jimmy Garoppolo, obviously, is another one. Uh, but I don't see the 49ers ready to take uh, that leap and be a significant contender. So I don't think that's going to come to fruition. So it's probably going to be Brady or Rodgers. And, and if you want a surprise, you probably look Jared Goff's way. Sports Bash here on 97.3 ESPN. John, which free agent quarterback will have the most success in year one? Well, that's going to be Kirk Cousins. I, I, I mean, if you look at the situation he's coming into and the fact that uh, where he was in Washington, and, and you look at the numbers, it, it really, over the past three years, he's never thrown for less than 4,000 yards. His worst completion percentage was last year, I think it was 64%. He's been up near 70 in the past touchdowns 25 plus and the reality is he's never played with a defense that was even top 20 the best defense he ever played uh was 21 and then the two others were both 28th in the league so he, he's going to minnesota and they're going to have a top five defense at, at the bare minimum uh unless something as far as injuries, catastrophes happen. So you bring that kind of production next to a, a defense that's going to be that good, uh, that's going to be pretty impactful. The problem Kirk Cousins has, and this is similar to what I said in a, in a lower level with the Eagles. Look, we all know Carson Wentz is better than Nick Foles. At least we all should know. There are a few fans out there who, who hold out. But as I said, Nick played so well in the postseason, it would have been hard for Carson Wentz to have played at that level over a short period of time. And I, and I think that same kind of dichotomy exists in Minnesota because they won 13 games last year, and it's hard to win 13 games in this league. So if Kirk Cousins goes in there and wins 11 games, throws for – 5,000 yards, 30 touchdowns, uh, it's going to be spectacular, but some people might look at that as a, as a disappointment. Either way, he's going to do – he's going to put up big numbers and he's going to be on a good football team. How about which offseason addition will make the biggest impact in 2018? 
Well, I'm go- I'm going to put two, and, and I'm going to put them and kind of together, and that's the cornerbacks of the Rams and what they were able to do uh, in bringing in Marcus Peters and Aqib Tlaib. Uh, I, I mean, if you look at the talent on that defense and the fact that you might have two lockdown corners, we just talked about Aaron Donald and Dominic and Sue. You could put Sue in the conversation as well. That's how much talent the Rams have added uh, on the defensive side of the football. But if you think about what the NFL has become and, and what teams value, starts at quarterback, obviously, and then it's really guys who can get to the quarterback and, and guys who can shut down the passing game, lock down corners. And the Rams arguably got two in one off season. So that's that's pretty impressive. John McMullen at JF McMullen, by the way, one of the writers picked Marcus Peters and a keep to leave the Rams corners there. Tyron Mathal was listed. Uh, Nate Soldier for the Giants, uh, new lineman there for all you Giant fans out there. Jimmy Graham. Uh, that was our buddy Casey Joyner listed Case uh, Jimmy Graham going to the Packers. One with uh, Case Keenum to Denver. Tyrod Taylor to Cleveland. That one's interesting. Uh, and uh, another one went with Saquon Barkley going to the Giants. Uh, that question that Pete asked was, which offseason addition will make the biggest impact? How about this one? Which team declined the most this offseason? Uh, I look at the Seattle Seahawks at the top of that list. If you just look, to me it starts on the defensive line. If you look at the talent they lost, they traded Michael Bennett, obviously, here uh, to the Eagles. They lost Sheldon Richardson in free agency uh, to the Vikings. They they lost Cliff Averill to a neck injury. Uh, likely going to retire. If you look at the production just long-term of those three players in the NFL, that's really, really difficult to replace, uh, even though they still have some good players. And then you talk about Richard Sherman moving on, obviously after the torn Achilles. It's been a great run for Seattle, and especially that defense, certainly the best defense of this generation. Uh, but they are clearly, clearly trending downward, and I think it's sped up this offseason. All right. Uh, some of the uh, teams listed, by the way, Buffalo, Miami, another Buffalo, another Miami, Seattle, uh, Casey Jr., Seattle from Dan Graziano, Miami, Seattle. So it sounds like a group of those three there uh, were the three teams in play uh, by the national panel there. John McMullen, which team improved? the most this offseason? Well, here's one where I'm going to say, you know you know me, Mike, and I'm not a big Eli Manning guy, but uh, if there are no more excuses for Eli Manning. So we're going to learn whether I'm right or I'm wrong. Uh, because he mentioned Nate Solder before, uh, Will Hernandez, they, they uh, really, really improved from a talent perspective on that offensive line. O- OBJ, Odell Beckham is still there. He's going to be at OTAs on Monday, which is a bit of a surprise, uh, without a new contract. So you have a tremendously talented receiver, arguably top two or three in the league when he's healthy. And now you have Saquon Barkley, who if you listen to certain people, is sort of a mix between Adrian Peterson, Marshall Falk, Earl Campbell, name any Hall of Fame running back you want to talk about. Now, people are obviously ridiculous with that kind of hype, but that's the kind of talent you're talking about with Saquon Barkley. Uh, So there are no more excuses. And really defensively, even though the Giants did not play well defensively last year, uh, certainly 31st out of 32nd, still there's talent on that defensive side of the ball if you go back the year prior, which kind of carried that team to the playoffs and and to a double-digit win. So, look, they were so bad last year. They have to improve. They they have added everything on the offensive side of the ball needed for a quarterback to succeed. They need to improve. And if Eli Manning can carry his water, they will be a much-improved team. All right, uh, by the way, some of the votes were the Rams, the Cleveland Browns, the Chicago Bears, the Cleveland Browns again, 
the New York Jets and another Cleveland Browns. Oh, uh, Cleveland, no wins. Where do they go to? Two, three? Well, no, and I, I was going to say Cleveland as well because of where they start. Like, that that could be a six-win team. Uh, and when you start at zero, well, plus six in this league is pretty darn good. Uh, so if you want to look at it from that perspective, you could certainly go in that direction. Problem is, you're not going to be relevant at six teams anyway. So I, I kind of put that into the equation as well. But the fact that they have Tyrod Taylor now, it's a quarterback who doesn't make mistakes. If they just had that last year, they probably win three or four games yeah, uh, and just didn't make the egregious mistakes. Uh, so now they have that at the bare minimum. So from where they're starting as one of the worst teams in the history of football, they're going to show drastic, drastic improvement. There's no question about that. Well, one wins an improvement. 50% exactly. more. Exactly. So, <laughs> and if you get, if, as I said, if you get the six wins, you're still a bad football team. But that's a heck of a lot better than zero. There's not many teams that can go plus six uh, from one season to the next. All right, Johnny Mack, of course, uh, the uh, NFL uh, offseason quickly moving. The Eagles with uh, the OTA minicamp starting on Monday, and the media will be there on Tuesday, so we'll have plenty more on the Eagles uh, and their offseason. Check out John, of course. Uh, he's got an article up about the Eagles punting situation. Oh, There's that always Light reading for the PT. Absolutely. Cameron Johnson. 973ESPN.com. And you can read his national NFL coverage at getmoresports.com. John, have a good weekend, pal. You too, guys. Thank you.